prevent irregular bushfires that frequently encroach into the area from the neighboring southern Senegalese region of Casamas. The two borders share common practice in helping each other mitigate fire outbreaks in the forest and surrounding vegetation which they mutually share. Residents of the two villages confirm that this is not the first time the Casamas area of the border forest caught fire. The act has been an unforeseen danger for a long time and has often threatened the lives of animals and livestock in the forest. The people of Kafuta have always managed to prevent the fire from the Casamas forest from entering their domain by mobilizing neighbors and seeking help from their Senegalese counterparts in fire belting activities. I went to as far as inside the Casamas and find out that even some cattle snakes. <laughs> Bushfires, the National Livestock Owners Association recently embarked on a nationwide sensitization campaign on the dangers of bushfires on animals. The tour, which was led by the president of the association, started in the North Bank region and ended in the West Coast region. Our guy tells us more. Act of bushfires on livestock continues to impose a major threat to the sector's development. But with farmers across the country, looking to increase their stock. The National Stock Owners Association is keen on allaying what has become a major impediment for cattle farmers. Their strategy is community sensitization, raising awareness on dangers of bushfires. The nationwide program saw officials of the National Livestock Owners Association visiting all major livestock areas in the country. The association's president, Ibrahim Ajalo, said the livelihood of every farmer likely depending on the forest. Stressing the need for increased community sensitization, Jalo highlighted the importance of educational schemes on forestry management that especially target farmers to teach them vital skills to tackle bushfire and cattle wrestling. Uh, 
Gambia. Livestock presents an immense potential to support the rapid development of agriculture and efforts to empower farmers and boost national nutrition. Aware of its growing market, the National Livestock Owners Association wants to resolve all challenges impeding growth in the livestock industry for local farmers to make the most from the profitable sector. Reporting for GRT's News, I am Awagai. Three years ago, the previous government stopped paying salaries to alcalos within the Kanifing municipality, a decision many received with great discomfort. Three years down the line, the current government is on a reimbursement campaign, marking the end of a long embargo. As Senna Bujain reports, the final payment, worth $1.2 million, was given out to officials at the Kanifing Municipal Council. This suitcase contains a cash amount of $1.2 million and is meant for this group of people who are all alcalos heading different townships in the Carnifing municipality. The council assembled all village heads traditionally called alcalos for the major presentation ceremony which took place at the KMC chambers. Municipal officials in Carnifing say this is the final payment of arrears owed to village heads. The alcalos were owed over two million dalasi, which accumulated as the previous government delayed and refused to pay village heads who have not been paid until this current investment. We decided to leave by our terms of reference that is not only to accompany the management of the KMC, but to give a complete diagnosis of the problems and solve the ones that we can solve and also recommend to government through your ministry <coughs> how to actually take care of the numerous issues that the municipality is facing on a day-to-day basis. At the local ministry, the reformation of local governance is being practically driven at the local government, but for the permanent secretary of lands, reforms and structural changes will be meaningless without necessary commitment from our Carlos who play a central role in the community development. I think we have to be frank and honest with each other. If we can team up in three months and gather $10, but we cannot team up in five years to gather the 50 group, that is a question. National Assembly members, Mary Sisei, condemns the long wait village heads had to endure and held out Carlos for enduring the tedious wait of over three years without payment of any entitlement. Those of us who work on a monthly basis, you will all agree with me at the end of the month, if we are not paid later, two weeks, you will have created a big noise. Also, we have all those who are on their road. But uh, this honorable... Uh, Traditional leaders are so patient for three good years. They also need to be commended. Our Alcalo, thank you very much for this. A new dispensation seems rather committed to the reorganization of local governance, which plays a fundamental role in actualizing the country's goals of decentralization, taking development gains across the country. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Sina Bujai. The Gambia Armed Forces wishes to inform the general public that it will conduct a live firing exercise on Monday, the 7th of May, 2018, at the Lance Corporal Bojang's range in Brikama. The general public, especially residents around the range in Brikama, Kasa Kunda, Jalambang, and other satellite villages, are urged not to panic, but caution to avoid the designated area on the above-mentioned date. <clears throat> the cyber experts team from the Council of Europe on Friday ended a three-day capacity building workshop for Gambian stakeholders in the ICT legal and security domain. Ibrahim Majaro covered the closing ceremony and now reports. The training was intended to save the ability of stakeholders and provide advice on legislation in line with the Budapest Convention, Rule of Law and Human Rights including data protection standards. The initiative funded by the European Union and the European Council was initiated by growing cybercrime and related misconducts across the world. 
thanks to persistent use of technological devices. The Minister of Information and Communication Infrastructure, Demba Ali Jao, described the workshop as apps in the course of combating cyber crimes, which according to him have become a body in both underdeveloped and developed countries. He disclosed his ministry's optimism for a legislative approach to prevent possible cyber crimes. However, for this to happen, it is absolutely necessary to develop a robust legislation, security protocols, mechanisms, tools and systems at all nodes and edges of the cyberspace, so as to effectively fight against cybercrime. More so, cybercrime is growing rapidly, and the, uh, the threats it poses to our economies and social activities are, is unprecedented to the extent that efforts at national level are just not adequate enough in combating it. Hence, the need for a unified, coordinated, and collaborated global approach. Official reports reveal that the global phenomenon has become a threat to data protection amid rising cases where electronic devices were being used in court to prove or disprove effect. The EU ambassador to the Gambia, Atila Laos, said there was need for international cooperation to devise new ways of tackling cyber crimes. He called for adequate data protection and appropriate legislation to deal with such occurrence. The fast evolution of criminal behaviors and patterns, exploiting technology developments and existing legal gaps is omnipresent. We read about it every day in the news. This is particularly worrisome if we consider that today there are over 10 billion internet-facing devices in operation. Fighting criminal activity carried out in cyberspace is a complex challenge, in particular because cybercrime ignores borders. Lamin Jaju, a state council at the Ministry of Justice, is among the participants hoping to gather sufficient intellect on ICT-related crimes. Criminals now are very intelligent. They use internet system to fraud systems and then get away with a lot of uh, criminal proceeds. So it's important for, for, for the country and as well as I'm a stakeholder, I prosecute cases. And most of our cases, we have difficulties to, to tender such evidence in court. A three-day brainstorming session will culminate with the drafting and application of legislation on cyber crimes and electronic evidence in the Gambia. Ibrahim Ajal, GRTS News. And that was the uh, a report on the opening ceremony of that ICT experts meeting. We hope to bring you the closing before the end of this newscast. Well, we will now take our first commercial break. Still ahead is the sports news. And Nigeria's former first lady faces prosecution in connection with assets acquired during her husband's tenure in office. We'll be right back. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's why we want you to see it, just as we see it now. LG OLED TV. solo sabir game ak fifta ge go amul fenn la top sa ho dering bu es bi ñu tenk ko ci tati prix centiliter di la jox mané sa yu njabot gi dajé di lek top sa ho dering fa gën ndax banex ak contenté go am solo la indir njabot gi yeb top sa ho dering fess del ak vitamin c mu gën pour njabot gi top sa ho dering hmm aka neex mané sa amé jota yim big té sey wala taka top sa ho dering na ci gën ndax da fa neexal torop sa fet ñëm di ci banexu mané ñamal sé top sa ho fruit drink si ñu am ko ci flavors yu bari démé na ci orange mango ak yenen tropical fruit flavors top sa ho amna lactic drinks tamit ñu fess tel ak vitamin c ak calcium top sa ho amna yogurt fruit tamit tamarind juice di energy drink bu la jox doole bu amul fenn mané ñamal hé ci top sa ho fruit drink si nga xamné outé na ci fi nek top sa ho drink si nak ñu len ko indi di top food té top food amul wéranté mu gën ci africa Sports. 
All African boxing super middleweight champion Fode Baji will defend his title on May the 11th in Bamako against challenger Mohamed Silla from Sierra Leone. The Gambian champion has been on intense preparations for his upcoming title bout. GRGS. <laughs> venture into boxing. But for 25-year-old Fode Baji, who was born in Banjuluding, defied all the odds by turning to professional boxing. His hard work, dedication, and discipline paid off when he successfully defeated Senegalese champion in the All-Africa Boxing Championships in Dakar last year. And now he is set to defend his title on the 11th of May in Bamako against a Sierra Leonean challenger, Mohamed Silla. I've been preparing for uh, almost three months. Yeah, me and my fellow boxers, they've been helping me. And Mohamed Juf, my manager, who is always telling me, you know, you have to train hard, you know. As a boxer, you have to respect your opponent. Um, respecting your opponent means you have to train very hard. Because um, through training hard, you can achieve your win. Shy by nature, he is a lion in the ring. As his promoter and trainer, Mohamed Juf, confidently verified. I'm living with Fodi, the same compound. And Fodi is my younger brother, and I see that he loves boxing. And I was a coach, and that's why I support him to this level now. Uh, I really want to thank him, because Fodi is a very big lion. It's not easy for him, because of lack of support. But uh, now he's the champion of the whole Africa Boxing Championship. And he's supposed to defend himself, uh, the belt in, in, inside Mali. I wish all the Gambian people yeah. support yeah. him and yeah. give him support. Pode, when were you introduced to boxing? Um, I was introduced into boxing mm. uh, since 2008. Um, during my school days, I was a football player. Yeah, um, after finishing my schooling, um, one of my brothers, mm -hmm. he was a boxer. And former boxing president mm -hmm. was in Bajulending called Samba Korea. So they were the people who were encouraging us in boxing. Mm -hmm. A quietly confident champion who respects the mm -hmm. opponent. The sky is the limit for Fode Baji, a son of Gambia and a champion of Africa. Boxing, it changed my life uh, very well. Because our sport, um, it controls you. It tells you what to do. It takes Teach you good manner, respect. Reporting for GRTS, I am Jai. And up next is the international news. Stay with us. has ordered the seizure of two properties belonging to former First Lady Patience Jonathan. Authorities are investigating how she acquired the properties which are located in the capital, Abuja. The former First Lady is facing prosecution in connection with assets she acquired during the tenure of her husband, Jonathan Goodluck. Kelechi Amakala has more. Properties she owns. Nigeria's anti-graft body, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, accuses the former First Lady of amassing personal wealth out of stolen public funds, the latest being properties valued at $5 million in the prime part of Abuja. They are registered under a charity fund fronted by her. A federal high court in Abuja has now ordered her to temporarily forfeit them to allow the anti-graft body to investigate the source of money she spent on procuring the properties. Property market is one of the most important drivers of growth in Nigeria, but it's also heavily tainted. The sector is seen as a major clearing house for stolen public funds. No legal process is in the test here. Uh, so it, it will take a lot of patience. It will take a lot of uh, consistency on the part of those who are prosecuting to ensure that gets to a logical conclusion. 
conclusion. The bigger challenge for us in our country is always about getting to that logical conclusion. But I can tell you that, like many other things, the attention of civil society, the attention of the media is focused on those issues. So it's going to be very, very difficult to be swept under the carpet. Numerous properties owned by former government officials and those politically connected have been seized by the anti-graft agencies. But most of the cases have not yet been disposed and they could take longer than anticipated to resolve. Quite often the properties are concealed under dubious names and identities and that presents a major obstacle in ascertaining the true ownership of the properties and the source of money of the owners. It's even done with impunity. People don't even, people, somebody is erecting a structure, he goes there physically to supervise the structure and then when you attach that to his earnings, even for life, you find out that that doesn't happen. So it's, it's really, um, the assets, asset issues has to do with impunity and lack of political will to get around. The former First Lady, Patience Jonathan, is not new to efforts to recover illegally acquired wealth. Previously, the anti-graft agency froze numerous accounts linked to her. Those accounts contain millions of dollars and she's still battling to unfreeze them. This new order adds to a growing list of her protracted court battles. The court has given the EFCC 45 days to investigate the property before hearing resumes. Kelechi Amekala. CGT in Abuja, Nigeria. A seemingly innoxious brown and beige caterpillar is waging a silent war. It's devastating livelihoods and threatening the continent's food security. British scientists say the fall armyworm has colonized 75% of the continent. CGTN's Alexander Majala has more details. What is of Africa's farmland? I lost 50% of my usual harvest, so that automatically translates into 50% of your harvest, of your, you know, less income. So you have to source from outside, and last year the maize price hit its highest. Over 200 million farmers and their families grow maize as a cash crop. It is one of the deadliest crop pests in the world. Uh, it has a capacity to attack uh, a, a number of crop species. Maize is, of course, its major preference, and maize being the staple food crop of Africa, uh, the, there is a very serious concern about uh, the threat to food security. The armyworm nestles around the head of the maize, attacking it methodically, leaving behind shreds of leaves and hollowed out ears of corn. Various techniques have been tested in a bid to eliminate the pest. Last year they used ash, uh, it worked for some, uh, even up to soil, huh? some farmers were putting soil in the funnel of the crop, huh? and it worked for some of them. Because I think uh, it, it works with the issue of suffocation, it suffocates the pest. In the absence of a quick fix solution, scientists are calling for better farming practices to increase yields and compensate families for lost harvests. Alexandria Majala for CGTN. And we will now go back to our earlier story about the cyber experts team from the Council of Europe who have ended, uh, which, who ended a three-day capacity building workshop today uh, for Gambian stakeholders in the ICT legal and security domain. Ibrahim Majala covered the closing ceremony and this is his report. The focus of the Budapest Convention to strictly deal with cyber crimes has been understood at the climax of the three-day intensive session. Although parts of the Gambia's Communication Act 2009 reflect the provision of the Budapest Convention, the outcome of the meeting suggested for it to be reviewed and updated to adequately cater for the proposed anti-cybercrime crusade. And this is just a starting point, and uh, we as Council of Europe, uh, we want to commit to uh, keep uh, supporting the Gambia in this process of harmonization of the legislation on cybercrime with international standards. The political will for a desired legislation has been acknowledged at cabinet levels. We wish to assure you these ministries and the government of the Gambia's readiness and commitment to collaborate with the Council of Europe in the fight against cybercrime by putting in place an effective legislation. Legal sources at the Ministry of Justice disclosed difficulties in tendering electronic evidence in court 
to prosecute cybercrime cases in the Gambia. This, among others, triggered questions and concerns by personnel from relevant authorities seeking clarification from experts. In the uh, Information and Communications Act, uh, those have enough provisions towards uh, electronic evidence and cybercrime. So if there are offenses related to cybercrime and electronic evidence, uh, there is not enough legislation to prosecute such. So there is that need to review, update, or bring a new legislation in that aspect. Criminals now are very intelligent. They use internet system to fraud systems and then get away with a lot of uh, criminal proceeds. So it's important for, for, for the country. And as well as I'm a stakeholder, I prosecute cases. And most of our cases, we have difficulties to, to tender such evidence in court. Gambian telecom companies have in the past been targeted by cyber criminals who stole thousands of airtime mates before being noticed. This unfortunate occurrence, according to officials, signals the urgent need for legislative actions against cyber lawbreakers. Ibrahim Ajal, GRTS News. And now to end the news, a look again at the main news headlines. There were nominations and now there are campaigns. But for one candidate, the race has ended even before the D-Day. Lawyer Asan Martin has withdrawn his nomination. One Genius Initiative serving two countries, the dwellers of Somita Village and their Senegalese counterparts battled fire outbreaks. Nigeria's former First Lady, Patience Jonathan, faces prosecution in connection with assets acquired during her husband's tenure in office. African farmers stage a fight against army worms, which are massively threatening food security. And that brings us to the end of this 8 o'clock news bulletin. We will be back at 10 for another edition. Till then, from your news team, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of our programs.